Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Hercules City Council Candidate Forum, hosted by the Contra Costa Taxpayers Association. Thank you for joining us. Our nonpartisan mission is good government at affordable cost. We do not endorse or oppose individual candidates, and we offer this forum in the interest of presenting information for a well-informed vote. My name is Susan Preco, and I'm the current president of Contra Costa Taxpayers Association, and I will be moderating this forum. Tonight, all six Hercules City Council candidates uh, were invited to participate. Alexander Walker Griffin is unable to attend due to a conflict and yesterday, uh, Tiffany Grimsley informed me she had a family matter come up that requires her attention. Uh, so we will proceed with the other candidates. We are expecting two more and we will proceed. In alphabetical order, the four remaining candidates are Gerard Boulanger, Irina Galieva, Dan Romero, and Celsa Taraya. The order that they will speak is by random draw, and they have witnessed how that was done, and then it will be followed in succession. So each candidate will have the opportunity to answer each question, some questions first, some questions last. Uh, and of course, they will each have a minute to introduce themselves. Each candidate has been given four questions in advance, and there are four or five additional questions that will be posed to them tonight. Each question will be allowed two minutes to answer and public comment at council meetings is normally three minutes and sometimes less. It's not always easy to make your points in two or three minutes. And we hope that our electeds remember this exercise in the future when listening to public comment at meetings. We expect that no candidate will be interrupted while speaking. And I will flash a 20 second warning as a courtesy to the speaker uh, when they're getting close to their time and when time is up, that means you, you should be wrapped up by then. Uh, and all participants, as I've said, are muted except for the moderator and the candidate panel. Uh, we are waiting for two more of our candidates, but we'll get started anyway. So uh, let's start with introductions, and that would be a minute for yes, Gerard. Thank yes, thank you. I would like to uh, thank the uh, Cocoa Tax Association, and especially you, Sopreco, for organizing this. This is very nice. So I will briefly introduce myself. Uh, I have been a resident of Hercules for 24, year, 24 years. I've invested here to establish my family and my business. My interest in our city's future is also based on my intent to retire here in Hercules, the city I cherish and wish to see more strong and prosper. I've been a city council member for five and a half years and made our financial health my main concern. I'm proud of my involvement back in 2011 and 2012 when our city was close to bankruptcy. Since then, finally emerged from its own ashes. I love this job and I wish to continue to do it for the next four years. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Dan? Thank you. Thank you, residents of Hercules. Uh, I also want to thank the Coco Taxpayers for sponsoring this and Sue Preco. Uh, I am Dan Romero, I'm a candidate for Hercules City Council. I am a nine year incumbent, three time mayor. I also started in 2011, but prior to that, I attended council meetings regularly to the point where I was coined the glad pie of Hercules because I just would not go away. Staff didn't like me. I was always asking questions. My concern was the redevelopment agency's debt of $330 million and no, no buildings built, nothing. There was corruption going on. Myself and Gerard Boulanger and Bill Wilkins back in 2011 started a recall and we were successful in uh, recalling three candidates at the time. Since then, it has been just a whirlwind. We, we had a new city manager, new finance director, uh, 
we were able to work together, pull the city out of financial uh, collapse. And today we are almost, uh, we have a two, two month reserve and $2.2 million in uh, pension trust fund. Thank you. Thank you. Well, since uh, we haven't been uh, joined by the others, we will start now. The first question, one that was posed to all of the candidates in advance, what do you hope to accomplish as a city council member? Gerard Boulanger, please address the question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, not, not necessarily in a special order, but uh, something I have, you know, thought about for a long time now. Uh, I would like to complete the waterfront project uh, and the train stop with an access for the ferry. I would like to uh, continue to fund our employees' pension plan, thus reducing our unfunded liabilities. I would like to continue to fund our reserve to reach four months of, ex of expenditure if we can. I would like to get rid of the debt of finance payment without compromising city jobs, services, and programs. And finally, I would like to prepare the resident to renew the user utility tax in four years. Thank you. Thank you. Dan Romero, you're up next. You. Uh, the reason why I want to be re reelected again is because I want to see a completion of the, some of the retail products we have. I want to see Safeway get completed, which we should open in November, December. I want to make sure that Sycamore Crossings gets completed with the new hotel and retail. I want to make sure the Capital Quarter comes to Hercules and, and we become a destination stop. But more importantly, I want to make sure that Hercules is financially secure for the future. And I think you hear the same things from the current Councilman Boulanger. Our, our fiscal future is so much valuable. We want to make sure that we, we leave, that we have a viable pension trust that we have right now. Our OPEB, we're currently at 60% uh, of OPEB and growing and, and leave reserves. But more importantly, make sure that we have commercial revenue that, that sustains the city so that we don't have to go back and ask for more taxes from the residents. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the second question, how have you been involved in the city of Hercules in the past? Dan Romero, you go first this time. As I mentioned in my opening statements, I was that one resident that came to the council meetings and kept on asking questions. And I continue to do that. I honor my oath. I represent the city of Hercules. I do it ethically. And I've never walked away from that. I always come prepared for a city council meetings. So my, I've been here nine years. I, after less than six months of being on council, I became the, the mayor because nobody wanted it because we're almost ready to be bankrupt. Nobody wanted the position. I was willing to step in and we, we got off. We rode the wave, we got lucky, and, but we got lucky because we had other uh, state and local officials that helped us. And, and more importantly, we had the residents of Hercules that understood that the new council didn't create the issue and we were able to get a couple of vital sales tax measures passed and the, uh, and the um, utility tax passed. And I think that's what saved us. So uh, I've been here, um, I wanna be here for four more years, but more importantly, I'm the one that asks those important questions. I don't shy away from it. I, I, I'm a uh, trust but verify type guy. And I, I, I think our city, uh, our city directors, our city uh, staff understand that. Tuesday, they're probably gonna get a call because first of all, I don't wanna embarrass staff. I always ask my questions prior so that they know what's coming up. Thank you. Gerard Boulanger, same question to you. Yes, thank you. Uh, you know, I, I moved in the USA uh, in 1996. Uh, I met this beautiful woman, Elizabeth. Uh, we married in 98. And uh, I was involved since 1999 in the Charette meetings meant to conceptually design the whole area between San Pablo Avenue and the Bay. Those meetings inspired grassroots movement a few years later to eventually to produce the Waterfront Initiative in 2008. That initiative is still today in use as a reference book for the whole Waterfront parcels. Then the sad days came in 2009 and 10 
when undisclosed and huge deficits are faced and literally sabotage our future. A record movement started. I was one of the first to join Anton Younger to steer the ship in the right direction once a record election could happen. I was elected in 2011 and re-elected again in 2016 for my first full term. I'm proud of my deep involvement in understanding our budget in details without losing the long-term vision. Thank you. Question three. What do you think are the most important issues facing Hercules currently and in the coming four years? And what will you do about them? And this time we go to Gerard first. Okay. Uh, the very first one is the pandemic, which, which affects all of us constantly, at work, at home, outside. The pandemic had and will have ripple effect on our park and rec revenue. Um, continuing to respect rules like wearing a mask, social distancing and washing hands should help. We were able to absorb the lack of revenue in previous fiscal year, and we will as well this current year, we will. The closing of our books is in progress and we anticipate to be in the black. This will be confirmed in a month. Hopefully, the pandemic will be part of the past and in a year, in a year, and if not, then we are fortunate enough to have put aside 3 million in general fund reserve and 4.5 million in funds for employees' pension. We could use those reserves if the pandemic is still affecting our revenue. The second one is our low, very low share of property tax from the county. For example, when a resident is paying $5,000 in property taxes, the cities receive only $180 from $5,000. The completion of current development is meant to add $1 million every year to the general fund. One of them will even provide an additional $2.5 million for our park and rec. The third and last one to me is the necessary renewal of the current user utility tax. If that tax is not renewed, then we'll be missing more than 4.5 million in the 2024-25 budget. We should renew it. Thank you. Dan Romero, you're next. Well, the next four years are vital because Hercules is close to being financially secure. We have to have the right direction to get us there. The past councils have taken that lead. You don't see Hercules getting involved in national politics because we don't have time for that. There's too many issues in Hercules. The other thing that's come up is charter city status. And we are gonna have a discussion about charter city status. Is it for a strong mayor or is it strictly to charge another tax? And from what I'm getting, it's strictly to charge another tax. Taxing people as they leave the city to the tune of $1,200 for every $100,000 is not the right way to go, especially when we as a city don't have the need for extra revenue right now. So we will have that discussion. There are other tools other than taxing our residents as they leave, and we will have that discussion. But that is the big thing that's coming up here in the future is, is the discussion of Charter City. And we've had, it's sort of disappointing as a council person to see fellow council members talking about the city being, uh, being uh, having a, a structural deficit. And when we are actually doing well as a city, uh, this, we are the only city in the West County that offered a 3% COLA and we didn't lay anybody off. We might be small, but we're wise. And, and that is good leadership. That, I, I, I say that because our city manager with the council work to get us there. So yes, elect your leadership and that's the continued leaders, the ones that have gotten us to this point. Thank you. Thank you both. The fourth question that was uh, offered to the candidates in advance, do you think Hercules should attract new businesses and how can it be done? Uh, first up, Dan Romero. Thank you. Well. 
Yes, uh, I think there's um, a chance of bringing in new business, but we have a city manager with 40 years of experience. We are really close. We have almost all of our projects approved. And what I would love to do is try to see us renew Mr. Big's contract and let him do something fun, which would be community development. Why not use somebody with 40 years that has all that knowledge to try to bring in the correct businesses? As we grow, uh, we, just, we, we just refinanced our library bond and that gave us a little extra money. I was hoping maybe we could use some of that extra money as, as seed money to bring in some restaurants. Uh, the city of Hercules over the last nine years has never borrowed any money. And we've been able to get some of the lowest rates for a refinance of our library bond and also for the new solar array for the city hall. And we, we got really low rates. So as a city, we are fiscally sound for, for lender two times in a row to lend us money to the tune of, uh, I think it was four or $5 million. Very impressive for a city that was almost bankrupt nine years ago. So uh, my belief is, is to allow professional to do that and the professional sits in the city manager seat right now and let Mr. Biggs do something fun. And that's bringing in new business into the city here. Thank you. Gerard Boulanger, same question. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, the quick answer to your question is a big yes, of course, but that's not enough as an answer. Uh, you know, I, I, we, we all need to understand that the city has little flexibility, if any, in dictating investors what business they should have on their private property. City Hall has a say on zoning uh, and on signing or not a contract with the developer with a mix of residential and retail. All our project, all of them, current or pending, have such mix per contract. However, the economy has changed drastically recently. Even the pandemic accentuated that, but even without the pandemic, the economy has changed. City mostly based on anything else than food or services were severely damaged by the new economy and are facing drastic cuts and layoffs. None of that happened here in Hercules, even in this difficult time, none of that happened. Having said that, the best way to attract new businesses is to create a positive momentum. And I think this is what's going on right now with soon to be the brand new Safeway, with high visibility from the freeway, Sycamore Crossing with a mix of residential, retail, and restaurant and hotel, and the waterfront, which, which become week after week, a destination for those enjoying the Bay Trail and contemplating the fast progress on the first phase of the waterfront. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to move to questions that were not previously posed to you. So I will ask the question of each of you. And then um, this time I'll repeat it before each of you begin talking since you've never heard it before. Uh, and Gerard, you're going to be going first this time. Okay. So the question yeah. is, how will you increase Hercules city revenue without raising taxes? The main way to increase revenue is what's going on right now. We are with the new development. Um, you know, I, I mentioned that in my answer to the question, but with the new development we have uh, right now, which should be finished in four to five years, uh, the incremental uh, income is about one million per year. So that's the first way to increase revenue. I think the main one. Okay. Dan Romero, same question. How will you increase Hercules City revenue without raising taxes? Well, as you see, we have Safeway coming on. We have Sycamore Crossings, which uh, Safeway and the gas station being the anchor is gonna be incredible there. I, I guess the next avenue would be uh, getting the owners on Creekside together and trying to coordinate something with the city, with the owners of Creekside to do something a little bit different with Creekside, I guess. Creekside has been there for 35 years and it needs a little bit of touch up on it. And why not let the city with the experience of the city manager try to help that and bring in some different businesses. But again, as a city, we look at our pension obligation. We're, we're straddled by CalPERS and their lack of investments and our pension obligations are gonna go up. 
there's a, there's a discussion that CalPERS will be charging cities more. And so that is a cost that how do you, how do you plan for that? Because you don't know what's going to occur. So as a city, yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to do everything we can. I think we've been successful about that. Um, we, we have to wait for the train station to be built at the waterfront before we can start doing uh, the retail around the train station. So that's gonna take five, five to six more years. So there, there are avenues for us to do more in the city of Hercules. And, uh, and, but I think what we're finding out now that businesses wanna come to Hercules. And I think that's the important thing. We, we built the reputation. We need to continue with the success that we have. I mean, you gotta remember, we're having new development, new businesses coming in, without any money from anybody. RDA used to finance that. RDA used to give those opportunities. And we have business coming to Hercules right now because they want to be in Hercules, not because we're giving them money. Thank you. Thank you. And Dan Romero, you'll be going first on this next question. Now at about $17 million in rising, how will you address Hercules CalPERS unfunded pension debt? Well, I think we started that about three or four years ago when we, when we put together a pension trust fund. We currently have $2.2 million in it and it's growing. That is a private investment. It's a, so it's secure. And I think as we, you know, try, as we have one-time money coming available as a council, we need to think about growing that so that, uh, the interest that we're making off it could be possibly offset to the CalPERS increases. So uh, there are things that we can do. Um, you know, we, we can't go back on the contracts that we have. We have collective bargain agreements with the police and with the Teamsters. We can't go back on those contracts. So uh, we have to try to work. What, what do you say? We're working with lemonades and trying to make lemonade out of it. And that's a CalPERS situation. Gerard Boulanger, now at about $17 million and rising, how will you address Hercules' unfunded pension debt from CalPERS? There is only one way, is to reduce the unfunded liability. And we have done so uh, for the last five years. Uh, we have mainly two uh, funded we create as a saving, per se. One is OPEB, one is IRC Section 115, those funds all together are about 4.7 million or 4.6, uh, and uh, they are fun, uh, funded to a level of 60% uh, and 70% for another one. So we are on a very good track to, if everything goes well, on a good track to not be so worried about the unfunded level of uh, our liability. This is a key success to reduce that unfunded liability. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Gerard Boulanger, you will have the first uh, response to question seven. Some people in Hercules say that we have traffic problems. What do you think? And how would you mitigate those concerns or change the situation? <laughs> well, um, you know, we, we, yes, we, we, are, we have traffic because we have more residents and because we have more uh, businesses. So, of course, we have more traffic. Every single project, especially Safeway, which has been the focus point to talk about traffic, and I totally understand that because this is in the middle of town on the way to the freeway. Every single of them, especially the, the Safeway project, uh, you know, a very long discussion for months with many meetings were done by the planning commission to mitigate the traffic. To be more accurate, uh, an internal lane will be uh, built by the developer to, to keep the, the, the client of the gas station and uh, of the, uh, the bank or even, of course, the, the Safeway inside the lot instead of going in and out. Uh, this, this is a constant issue. I, I don't have a magic wand for that. What has been done is a, the process to mitigate and uh, you know, change the way the, the light works, change the speed limit, change the timing of the light. But at one point, and, and I'm sorry to say that because this is just the truth, we, we are not anymore a city with 5,000 people. And this is the little price we have to pay to become prosperous. Thank you. Dan Romero, 
some people in Hercules say that we have traffic problems. What do you think? How would you mitigate those concerns or change the situation? Well, first of all, the traffic on San Pablo Avenue is not created by Hercules residents. The traffic on San Pablo is created by people that don't want to travel on the freeway that are coming from the refinery. So our new construction, for instance, Safeway. So the sidewalk that's going into Safeway right now will actually be one lane to turn into Safeway. There will be two lanes on San Pablo from Sycamore to the freeway that will go onto the freeway. So that's one part of it. As Sycamore crossings gets built, then we will have another traffic light at Tashima, and then we'll have another light in the middle uh, close to Kenders. So there'll be two more traffic lights on San Pablo Avenue to slow up the traffic that we have not created from other areas to allow the Hercules residents to access, access you know, or leave the city. But again, traffic patterns, people that live in the promenade in that area, we have a John Muir that's a direct shot onto the freeway. But you know, people have their traditional traffic travel habits and they insist on coming on Sycamore. So it's, it's sort of a, um, a learning process, trying to get our residents to start using John Muir a little bit more because it's a quicker shot onto the freeway. But then we, the city has thought about what we're doing with Safeway. And that, that's the other, the Safeway project, okay? We added 20 pumps on the Safeway project. Do you know why? Because Pleasant Hill has 12 pumps and they have massive lines. So we, we asked the Safeway development, what, what would delete, what would get rid of all those lines? And he said, 20 pumps. So we have 20 gas pumps at Safeway. So I, I think that the council worked together and I think we came up with a pretty viable plan to take care of the traffic on San Pablo Avenue. Thank you. And our last question is number eight, and Dan Romero, you will go first. If you received a $1 million grant to use for the city any way you wanted, what would you do with it and why? Well, I guess I, first of all, I would share that with the employees because the employees are the asset of the city. We, we have employees that took a pay decrease, took an hourly decrease, they're still here. So that would be the first thing. The second thing would be set, set money aside so we can start recruiting businesses. Uh, I would like to have some money set aside so we can maybe uh, help a restaurant for the first 12 months with the rent to get them started. I mean, I'm tired of driving out of town to go to a restaurant. I want restaurants in Hercules. We're a beautiful city. So if I had a million dollars, somebody gave it to me, I would use that part of that, half of it for the employees. I'd use the other half so we can have some economic uh, development with, with businesses and help them go. Not like the tune of the old days where we gave $150,000 uh, to a business, but seed money, help them with the rent for their first year and, and see how that works. And I think that might be successful. Thank you. Gerard Boulanger, if you received $1 million grant to use for the city any way you wanted, what would you do with it? And why? Yes, uh, w one million is um, a big amount and a small amount, depending on how you look at it compared to the budget. It's just six percent of the budget. So, uh, a quick answer to your question: I would, I would just put, I would split the money in many parts. I would just put it in the OPEB to fund the, uh, the 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 pension, the retirement pension for employees. Uh, if you ask me for five, I would say something else, but one, I would just do this. Okay, thank you. Well, we've gone a lot faster than we had anticipated on this forum. So candidates, you now each have two minutes to close and you are welcome to state your platforms as you see fit. And since Mr. Boulanger had the opening, Ms. Romero, you are the one that will have the first closing. And here is your opportunity to take two minutes to promote yourself. Thank you very much, Susan. Residents of Hercules, I've been here. Nine year incumbent at the worst of times and a three time mayor, and I'm still willing to work another four years for your benefit. Please reelect me because I have that knowledge. I know how to work with council members. I know how to get issues solved. I have developers calling me up 
So because they run into problems, I'm that answer man in the city. When there's an issue, I get the call. When residents have an issue, I get the call. Some of the questions were asked tonight, I already heard them at Lucky's because residents are telling me this when I shop. So I, I am the people's person. I've been there. Let's not forget, okay, I was part of the recall. I was a freeway shooting mayor because when we were having over 100 shootings on Interstate 80, I went on and started saying, hey, we need a camera system. And it morphed into a camera system from on Interstate 80 from, from Cutting to Hercules on Highway 4 all the way to Antioch. I've been there and I continue to be there and I will be there because that's who I am. I did it as a citizen and now I have the opportunity to represent you. I have honored my oath every day, every meeting I come prepared. I do this also for our solid waste. The, the bags that you see are out of a, a fund that, that we have and we, I was the one that found the company to supply the reusable bags for the city of Hercules. I've been on the wastewater representing the city of Hercules. Just recently, we talked about ADUs being added, a state mandate, not understanding that we just spent $50 million on a sewer plant to take us into the future with the planned development we have. And now how do we start to think about all the ADUs that could be added and we might have to end up taxing our residents for a state mandate? So allow me to represent you because I am that person that will do that. Thank you very much. If I left today, I leave with, with honor because that's all I ever did. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Romero. And now, Gerard Boulanger, it is your turn for your two minute closing. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'd like to start by saying that, um, you know, we are very fortunate in Hercules to have the one and only city hall in the whole county to not have closed even one day during the pandemic. Not one day. We have people coming to work, even if they have some fear in the back of their head and they came to work. So I'd like to start my uh, closing a statement by saying that I really appreciate what, what has been done by the staff here. I am only asking for another term, a uh, second full term. I will be working very hard for uh, our city, for all our students, not just a few, all. I don't make any difference in race, gender, um, political views. This, this doesn't matter to me. Uh, you know, when I make a decision, uh, I don't say, oh, I am such and such, so I should do that. No, I, I work for, the citizen at large, not for a special group of people. This is very important to me, very. My main goal is and will be to continue our financial stability while our city is about to be completed. I'm very proud of having received endorsement from all my fellow city council members, and this means a lot to me. Uh, this has touched me a lot, just to have been recognized as a decent person doing his work and willing to continue. Thank you very much. Thank you both. And thank you all for participating and for watching. Contra Costa Taxpayers Association encourages voters to educate themselves on the issues and the candidates. Visit us at www.cocotax.org. Until we see you again, we hope you stay safe, be happy, and be well informed. Have a good evening. Thank you all for attending.